Hello! <laughs> I'm back. It's been a couple weeks since my last tutorial video. I apologize for that. And we're actually filming in my room today because my sewing area has been such a crazy mess with commission work and projects that um, it's kind of kept me away from doing um, videos on the side. However, I you know what, I needed to get over that and continue my work to bring tips and tricks to all of you viewers out there. So, hi! Today we're going to continue working with velvet, and um, I have some diagrams and samples that I drew since I'm not actively at my sewing machine. And while working with velvet, I wanted to talk about... Um, actually putting it, sewing it with your machine, um, overlaying it with other types of fabrics, um, etc. And let's start with essentially talking about how velvet can be a little difficult when trying to put it through a sewing machine or um, basting it to uh, another fabric, like just a, a woven that doesn't have a pile or um, a twill, something like that. And velvet is difficult in the same way that fur can be. It's because velvet technically has a pile, as you can see, much like fur. If you run your fingers over velvet, if you just kind of run it, it, it does feel a little plush, um, and you can even sometimes see a differentiation in um, the direction of the pile, the way the pile lays, so you can actually see the pile itself um, and feel it. Now, that can be difficult because as you're putting that through a sewing machine, I'll get my diagram of the machine foot and dog feed. Now, when putting it through the sewing machine, of course you have your, your presser foot and then you have your feed, your feed dog down here. Um, now, the purpose of the feed dog is to actually give some friction and grab as your fabric is going through the machine and that you know you have that pulling motion underneath as the presser foot is just pushing it down the presser foot is not moving at all it's just creating tension from above um, now that can be that can cause some difficulty when um, putting various fabrics with different um, textures or just different qualities like a knit versus a woven etc together for instance for this current project I'm trying to put a velvet together with a suede now a suede has um, you know I don't know how to say it. it doesn't really it has a pile but it's extremely fine so when I put it through the machine it's more it's it acts more like a woven wood. It's easier to work with than something that's more plush, like a velvet. So, as I'm putting the velvet through the machine, sometimes the stitching, I've had to take this stitching out, sometimes the stitching can kind of gather and pucker in your finished result, like so, um, because the reason is that pile on the velvet, going back to the diagram of the velvet pile, that um, that fur-like pile here, it it causes basically any fabric you put on top of it, it's going to move. It's not really providing a very stable surface in a sense. Um, it's just it creates more surface tension in between the two fabrics. So it's gonna, as the feed dogs, going back to the diagram of the feed dogs and the presser feet. So as the feed dogs are pulling and the presser foot is pushing down, basically your fabrics with that extra um, plush or just pillowing in between, they're going to move at different rates as the pile or the, you know, the 
the fibers on the velvet are not really providing a very um, leveled surface. They're just kind of moving and, you know, it's kind of like if I just put a, a layer of, of cotton and I'm, I don't know how to say it, but I hope you understand what I'm stumbling over my words about. Essentially, the pile the the pile is creating the fabrics to go in two different directions under the dog feet. Now, to alleviate this problem, because essentially, as the dog feet are pulling on, are more likely to pull on the velvet at a different rate, the easier way to alleviate this is actually to put your velvet, like, um, instead of laying your velvet down um, on the dog feet and then your other fabric on top, reverse that. Usually it's better to put your more stable fabrics, the ones that are less likely to pucker or stretch, onto your dog feet to provide a more stable surface and then your presser foot will just push the velvet down as it should. Or um, so essentially you're just by reversing your fabric lay the way you lay your fabric into your machine you're alleviating a lot of the tension that's resulting from the differential feed differential feed of the dog feet and the presser foot pushing um, as well as the different types of fabrics you're working with now this was an advanced concept, I understand that, um, but I do hope that it helps those out there interested in such, uh, in sewing velvet or sewing similar fabrics, or just learning more about differential feed when um, using your machine. So, um, thank you so much for watching. If you do find these videos helpful, please subscribe to the channel like the video, uh, do anything that you can to support the channel, and I promise I will make videos on time. Um, like I said, the last couple weeks I had family in town and then um, commission work. So things did get a little crazy and extracurricular activities such as updating my YouTube channel do get uh, pushed to the bottom of the list. But I enjoy that you guys are continuing to view and enjoy the videos. Please, I, I do it for you guys. Thank you.